All right, guys. Let's get started. We're going to be doing the uh, prone press ups for your first warm up exercise. So, on your belly, make sure you relax your toes out and let your heels cave to the outside, hands by your armpits. Big deep breath in and exhale. Good. You get all the way up towards the ceiling and back down. Big deep breath in, exhale. I'm just going for five reps. Back down to the ground. Just really take your time, get as high as you can. And this prone press up, keeping your hips as low as you can towards the ground. And we're doing five. Once you finish that fifth one, you're gonna flip over onto your belly. I'm sorry, onto your back. And we're gonna be doing a single leg hip bridge. So when you're here, make sure there's no space between your lower back and the ground. So you're gonna tuck your hips down towards the floor, fully belt, belly button down. Hip, knee, ankle, 90 degrees, palms up. And you're just gonna bridge. Driving through this heel, squeezing that butt cheek up and down for five, making sure you don't go too high where you arch into that lower back. And after your fifth one, switch sides, up and down for five. Make sure you guys get five each side. Just gotta fix my window really quick. There we go. After your fifth single leg hip bridge per side, we're gonna get on all fours. We have hydrants. And a hydrant is on all fours, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, toes dug into the floor. Make sure you grip the ground with your fingertips and you're just gonna open up the knee to one side and back without getting too high. So think chihuahua size fire hydrant, not great thing. And we're gonna do five on one side and then we'll do five on the other side after that. Again, make sure it's not too big. Hold it out there for just a moment and you switch your side. You should be feeling that butt working a little bit on this one, especially if you're squeezing and holding there. And after you finish your fifth hydrant, we're gonna do the Spider-Man with the T-spine rotation after that. So to do that, go right to a push-up position from here. So just straighten your legs out. Same thing, still grip the ground with your fingertips, corkscrew out, you're gonna sweep one foot as close as you can to that hand up here. And the hand that's by the foot is the one that's gonna move. You're gonna reach underneath your body, and then you're gonna reach all the way up, rotating that thumb to the outside, palm facing out, and then back through. Now think like you're just threading a needle, down up. We're gonna be getting five. And then we'll do five on the other side. This should feel pretty good. You should feel a lot of stretching pretty much everywhere, especially in this front hip. And then your upper back is what we're really trying to mobilize your thoracic spine. Switch sides after five. Again, it's the hand that's by the foot is the one that moves, reach through, reach up. Just thread that needle. Make sure you're squeezing your glutes to lock your lower back down. That way you're not twisting into your lumbar. So we don't want to get rotation from there. We want to get the rotation from your upper spine. And after that fifth Spider-Man, we're doing stationary inchworms. So we're back on up, nice and tall. You're going to hinge into the hips. Put the hands on the ground, walk yourself out to a push-up position without letting the hips drop too low and walk yourself right back up. I'm gonna go at an angle just so you guys can see a little bit. Just make sure when you go out, it's not too low with the hips and you drop an arch just into this plank position and all the way back up, standing. We're doing that for five. All the way out, take your time, try not to wobble your body. If you rush, there's this teeter-totter and it keeps happening, so take your time. Try to stay as steady as possible. All the way down, all the way up. Last one here. Good. And after that fifth inchworm is squats. So feet are shoulder width apart, guys. Now you can go a little wider, a little narrow, depending on you. And your toes can rotate out or in, depending on you as well. I like a little wide and a little rotated for me. But just down and up. Only go down as far as you can, ideally about parallel to the ground. I don't want you to go too low where you have that spine round. So only go as low as you can with a nice straight spine. We're going down and up for 10. Definitely need to warm up these squats because they have those one and a half squats coming up later. Whew. We got after this. All right, so we're gonna finish 10 squats here. And after that, we just have normal old jumping jacks. 
So, normal jumping jack, start with the feet together, hands to your side, open, close, open, close for 20. Again, arms and legs move at the same time. There we go. All right. After 20 jumping jacks, we have alternating lateral squats. Nice and wide, feet are flat and forward. Make you stick your butt up, squat to one side, all the way back up. Stick your butt up, squat to the other side, all the way up. Just make sure your toes always stay straight ahead. You don't roll that ankle, your foot stays flat on the floor. And you're just gonna alternate so you get five each side. All the way down, all the way up in the center. Don't shortchange that middle. You really want to pull those hips all the way through. And after your fifth one on each side, final warm-up exercise is called a T-jack. So rather than hands starting by your side, hands start out front, and rather you're just gonna open and close. Open, close. So you're just moving the arms forward and backward rather than up and down. It's still for 20. So let's knock these out. And then we're gonna get core going. All right, you guys finish that up. I'm gonna make sure nobody's waiting in the waiting room. And then we will get started. All right. All right, guys, finish up that warm up. We are gonna get class going. Just as before, we have a 10 minute circuit. We have three exercises. We have a hollow body hold. We have upper body rolling and reverse lunge to forward lunge. I'm gonna demonstrate all three really quick and then we'll get that 10 minute circuit going. So if you guys remember, hollow body hold, still the bane of my existence. I'm getting better at it though. So hollow body hold, you're gonna tuck your hips, arms are overhead, and you're gonna lift up just enough for your shoulders to come off the ground and then your legs are gonna be out. Now we've held this position and breathe five to 10 breaths. If you're feeling really confident with this, you can hold this position and start to rock. Much, much harder. I'm feeling more confident, so I might try that. So that is the first one. That is your hollow body hold or hollow body rocking. So you do the rocking, do about five to 10 rocks rather than five to 10 breaths. Take your time on it though. Next one is upper body rolling. On your back, arms are overhead. You're gonna pretend you're paralyzed from the waist down. Don't use your lower body at all. You're gonna reach up and over onto your belly. Take that same arm, reach up, back onto your back. You need that same side, using your arm and your core to keep your body together, rolling, trying to control it, not flopping everywhere. But again, one side for three, then the other side for three. And your last one, reverse lunge to forward lunge. This is where you guys can use some weights if you have anything. Dumbbells at your side, goblet up here, but a reverse lunge to forward lunge. Same leg, steps back, and then that leg is gonna launch forward into a forward lunge. That counts as one, right back into reverse, right back to forward. If you need to, take the step in between. If you feel like you're losing your balance and wobbling everywhere. If you really wanna add something, I did it last time, you guys can go into a balance first before you go to your next one. So you can add that in, you can also add the weights, whatever you guys like to do. But again, forward and backward counts as one, you need to do five each side. And that is your 10 minute circuit. Hollow body holds are rocking, upper body rolling, reverse lunge to forward lunge. I got 611 on my clock, so we're gonna do it 10 minutes, so 621, we'll move on. When you guys are ready, let's go to those hollow holds. I'm gonna start holding, I might get a little rocking going, but when you guys are ready, let's, let's get it going. Woo. All right, this one is always so good for me. Just make sure your core stays nice and tight. Big deep breath in. If you do this rocking, keep your body as tight as you can. Don't let your lower back arch. Maintain this banana shape position and don't let your arms swing forward or anything. You want to keep them. Oh, man. In that overhead position. Oh, how about you? I'm feeling that one. Oh, <laughs> only a couple of rocks and I feel it. Uh, upper body rolling is next if you are done with your hollow holds. I'm gonna go on my back. Arms are overhead. And that's that reach. 
up and over, same arm, reach, up and over. Making sure your core stays tight and you're not using your legs to get yourself over. It is just your upper body and your core connecting together. Creating good rolling patterns. All right, got one side. We'll do the other. Just make sure you look to where you want to go. That's the key for your body to follow. You know, as I'm always following my hand with my eyes. I'm taking my time. I'm not trying to whip myself. And I'm exhaling through the roll. That'll help me tighten my core up. And then we're on to that reverse lunge, the forward lunge. I got a little weight here I'm going to use. You hold it right by your chest if you want to do goblet. If you have two dumbbells, then you hold it at your side. It's up to you. But you would do forward, together, reverse, together. And if you're feeling good, you can go right from one to the next. It is up to you. And honestly, any weight, if you don't even have weights, you could hold a bag, you could hold a hook, anything to give you a little resistance. <sighs> Woo. But if you find yourself wobbling everywhere, get rid of the weight. I do the other leg after that. <sighs> Take your time, make sure your knees stay straight ahead. You don't want your knee collapsing in and out. Some people get this valgus collapse where the knee would dive in right here. Make sure you drive it to the outside. That way that butt can keep working. Woo! That was a hard idea. <laughs> After you finish your lunges, guys, take a breather. It's only been about three and a half minutes. So we should be able to get two more rounds in if we're staying at this pace. But you do want to rest. So hydrate. Remember, this is a strength workout. I'm trying to go for a time under tension. Even though we say you get as many rounds as you can in 10 minutes, we're still looking for intensity of those rounds, not frequency. Whew. My breath just showing all that. All right. If you've gotten your drink, you're feeling good, back to the hollow holds. I want to take a quick peek, see how everybody's doing. All right, all right. So it's all working hard. I like it. And if you guys are good, let's back to those hollow holds. I will join you. And you can play around with doing the holds for a little bit, then doing the rocking, or the rocking and the holds, it's up to you. But again, just make sure in that proper position. The tuck first, and then the shoulder lift, and then the banana. I'm going to hold it for a couple breaths. After the breaths, now I'm going to start getting a little rack. Okay, that's enough. Oh, man. That is a great position to work the core. And it might not look like it, but that's a good exercise to help pull-ups because that, that same hollow body position you would do your pull-ups on. But that is the first one. Back to upper body rolling. Woo. All right. Again, just make sure you look where you want to go. It's probably my number one cue for this exercise. Just use your eyes to help move your body. Everybody forgets about the head and they get stuck. Keep that breathing integrated with your movement. Where the core can stay as active as you can. Exhaling as you do the roll. Inhaling once you're back on your back or your belly.
Whew. All right. And it's a reverse lunge, the forward lunge after that. I'm actually going to stick with body weight. But again, you could do your dumbbells. You could do the goblet like I had last set. If you got a sandbag, you could do a front loaded. You could even do a max where you're moving the sandbag side to side. It's up to you, however you want to create some resistance. But I'm going to stick with my reverse lunge. I'm going to add that balance instead. So I need to work on my balance a little bit. And take your time. Make sure you're really steady. Even if you're doing the weighted version, still want to be steady in your movements. Whew. I'm starting to get a good sweat going on by you guys. Feeling warm. Whew. And if you're doing the balance like I am, make sure you really stick it up there for a couple seconds to own that balance. That way you're just not using momentum. Whew. One side. Next one. Ooh. And you'll probably notice the forward to balance is much harder than the reverse. Take your time on it. Make sure the leg you're standing on, you're driving through the ground and get nice and tall. Ooh. And you're gripping the ground with your toes. That'll help you be as stable as you can. Ooh, there it is. <laughs> Got one last one for me. Woo. Yeah, that's a good one to end on. All right. You finish up what you guys have. 6.19 right now, so still got about two minutes. We might be able to get one more round in, if not at least half a round. I'm going to sip my coffee because that is very important for a coach. <laughs> now we're going to do hollow holds next when you guys are ready and done with that lunge. But take your time. Again, don't rush it. Still want to breathe. I'm also going to have a little hydrating session too. There we go. Again, we still got about two minutes left. I'm going to start my hollow holds. All right. You're set up with me. Same thing, just make sure you drive that belly button into the ground. Lift those shoulders up, arms are overhead. Banana position. Keep that banana position. The more you can keep your shoulders off the ground, the more you're gonna feel it right there. Let's get an old racket going. is when you're doing that rock and try not to whip your legs up and down. It's just little movements to start adding up and you're able to get a big rock without whipping your limbs and losing that connection to your core. So you don't have to rock as big. Try to start small and then build up. Whew. All right. Upper body rolling. Almost there. A little less than a minute left. We'll see what you guys can get. I'm trying to get these in. Woo. I notice my lower body is flopping everywhere just because I'm keeping everything tight when I roll over. I'm exhaling. But when my body stays as one unit. But I'm not pushing off of it either. It's a fine line to balance on. Ooh. All right. Let's finish up with what you're on. It is 621. We're going to move on to the next exercise. If you want to finish this set while I'm demonstrating, go right ahead. But I'm going to show you what's coming up next. We have a nice 20 minute circuit with five exercises. I'm gonna read them off real quick, but I'll demonstrate them all too. We have the one and a half squats for 10, supermans for 10, rotational caustic lunges for 10, either a six point or a bear crawl position, roller stability, and then a shin box hip extension for five each side. Your one and a half squats though. Same position we started with the warm up. 
feet about shoulders apart, play around with the rotation of your feet, whatever works for you. But you go down like normal, and you come up just about halfway of that squat, back down, and then all the way up. And that counts for one rep. So again, down, halfway, down, all the way. I just showed you guys two. That's the first one, we'll do 10. So Superman is on your belly, arms are out. Your first movement should be pulling your belly button off the ground or taking your hips and tucking them back towards your hamstrings. Reach your body out as long as you can and then lift. So that way you can squeeze your butt, squeeze your shoulders and back down. So again, it's the tuck, reach and lift. That way we're not jamming into that lower back. If you're feeling your lower back, you're probably not reaching out as far as you can and getting long and you're not squeezing from the butt. But that's for 10. Tuck, reach, and lift. Remember that one. Uh, Cossack lunges. This is where you can add some weights too. Actually, with the squats as well, I'm sorry. You can always do a goblet position or a two dumbbell rack position. It'd be great for your squat. For the Cossacks, same thing. Dumbbells down here, goblet, two rack. You can mix it up. It's up to you, however you want to hold the weight. But feet start together. Step out. Point that toe up. Launch back together. So I'm not facing 12 o'clock on the clock. I'm going to step to five o'clock with my right leg. This leg's nice and straight, toes straight up. Launch back up. 10 on that side. And then we do the other side, stepping to about seven o'clock with my left leg. If the rotation isn't for you, you can always just do a step to the side and together, or you can just keep your feet flat and forward and do a lateral squat like we did in the warm up. All three variations are fine, as long as you're challenging yourself. Next one. Six point rotary stability on all fours. Grip the ground with your fingertips, kind of corkscrew out so you crease your elbows facing in. And you're gonna push through the ground with your opposite hand, knee and foot. The other one should kind of rise off, back down. You should feel your core really tighten up if you're driving hard into the ground and back. Big deep breath, going back. If you wanna challenge yourself more, knees are off the ground. Now you drive through your foot and your hand but you still have to hold the top of that for about three seconds. Again, that's five each side, 10 total. And your final one is a shin box, hip extension. You start with your hips, knees, ankles, 90 degrees, nice and militant with your posture. You're gonna rotate your knees to one side, keeping your feet flat on the floor, bridging those hips. Hips come back down, rotate the knees the other way, bridge back up. You don't have to do Hip extension, if it's not for you, you could just do the shin boxes. You can even do your hands supported, or you could just do a little stretch. It's up to you. Or if you really want to challenge yourself, you could hold a weight here in the goblet position while you're rotating and bridging. Heck of a lot harder when you're holding the weight because you can't round your spine. You have to stay nice and tall. So it's up to you. Let's start with the one and a half squats. We have 20 minutes on the clock and I got 625, so about quarter till we'll uh, get the finisher going. So 20 minutes, guys, let's get those one and a half squats. Again, you can hold a weight in a goblet position or you can do a two rack, it is up to you. But well, just take your time. This one should take a while because you're gonna go down, halfway, down, up. That was just one rep. So take your time, we're going for 10. Remember, this is all about time under tension. Muscles don't really care about the weight, they care about the tension you create. And that's why we're taking the time and that's we're at home. We don't have big heavy weights to create the tension, so let's use the time to help. <sighs> Try to connect your breathing with the movement. So you're breathing in on the way down, out a little bit, in, out. I'm only at five. Maybe I should be somewhere around there. Three more for me. Woo, my legs are feeling it. I did not want to move this morning. Well, they are now. Woo, there we go. All right, after those one and a half squats, guys, it is the Superman. So remember, you're on your belly as long as you can. It's that tuck. Reach and lift. 
tuck, reach, and lift. That tuck is super important to really keep your core engaged that you're not arching that lower back. So don't lose that tuck after you do it. A lot of people will tuck, reach, and then just forget about the tuck and lift right from their back. I'm gonna take a peek at you guys. Remember, we got 10. Let's see how we're doing. Kathy looking good. Laura, nice job. Lainey, killing it too. We got Steve, doing well as well. All right. You guys are getting after it, I love it. All right. After these Supermans, rotational caustics, grab a quick drink because I am thirsty. And you can take a drink whenever you guys want. You don't have to wait until the end of the set. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> All right, remember, rotational caustics. You can have two dumbbells at your side. You can hold one dumbbell or a kettlebell or a sandbag right up here. You can have two in a rack position is up to you. But feet together, take a step. If you're at 12 o'clock, I'm going to step with my right to five, launch back up. Step to the five, launch back up. Just make sure that posted leg, toes straight up towards the tail, not turning it out. Really want to open up that hip. You're going to feel it right into the groin back. That stepping leg, you're going to sit into that corner of the hip and back. I'm going to face a different direction so you guys can see but I'm right into my hip, stepping back. Right into my hip, stepping back. My chest will open up towards that direction I'm stepping with. And I'll face the other way. I'm gonna turn the other side, step to seven. Right into that corner. I'm back, just remember to pull those toes towards you, woo, without falling. <laughs> I'm back. There we go. Good. I know I'm a little powerful, I'll push off that leg. I'll stop and make sure I'm in a good position. I really want to generate some power in this back position from this stepping leg. Breathing in as you guys go back. Exhaling as you launch forward. Remember, it's 10 and 10. Woo. And that next one's going to be the rotary stability. Where you guys are on all fours or in a bear crawl position. You're still gonna start on all fours, but then you'll pick your knees up. So again, make sure you start with your hands underneath your shoulder. A lot of people get too far out and this exercise is not gonna go well for you. Hands underneath your shoulders, grip the ground with the fingertips, corkscrew the earth, that way the crease of your elbow is kind of facing in. I'm gonna push through my hand, my opposite knee and my foot, coming off the ground and back. Make sure you're not lifting the other legs up. It's more about the push through the ground, holding it for three than the lift. A big deep breath in. Hold back. Breathe in. Hold and back. And I just did two each side. I'm going to do my three each side now with my knees up. Take your time though. Woo. A lot harder with those knees up. Really got to pay attention to driving through the ground with that hand of the foot and connecting your breathing. Make sure the hands still stay underneath your shoulders. Woo. Oh man. If you're wondering if your hips are wobbling or shifting to the side, if you have a yoga block or honestly even your shoe, anything, you can always put it on your lower back. And you can use it as a feedback because if you're twisting, it'll shift or it might even fall. So it's a good feedback thing for you. Last one is the shin box to hip extension. All right. So again, you can hold a weight up here if you want to make it harder or even a sandbag across in a front loaded position would be great. Or just body weight. Doesn't need to be too hard. It's more of a corrective anyways, but you'll feel your core if you hold the weight. Remember to keep the knees rotating close to the body, feet on the ground, driving through your entire lower body to bridge the hip without arching into that lower back. You're just pushing straight down, getting as tall as you can, keeping those hips neutral. Back down to the ground, rotate. 
all the way up and down. We still got about 13 minutes left, guys, just to give you a heads up. Should be able to get about three rounds in total. Woo. If you're having trouble with the shin box to hip extension, you can always use your hands behind you and then bridge, or you don't have to do the bridge. It's up to you. The goal is to keep your posture as tall as you can. Once you are done with five each, take a break. If you're ahead of me, awesome. As long as you guys are taking your rest. Woo. I'm gonna take another drink. Yeah, Kathy going there, and I know she's gonna do two sets of the finisher. At least I'm mentally prepping myself already. <laughs> Was that a three? Oh, two. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> you scared the crap out of me, Kathy. <laughs> All right, <laughs> starting with those one and a half squats. Oh man. <laughs> All right, feet are shoulder width apart if you're back on these squats, guys. Remember, you can rotate the toes to the outside in, whatever works for you. Everybody's at a different kind of placement for their squat pattern. Just don't forget about your breathing. Always breathing in as you go down. Exhaling in, exhaling. When I'm in this position, my toes are crushing the floor, and I'm kind of turning the earth with my feet. My knuckles of my toes are turning white because I'm gripping so hard. It's called rooting. Think about a tree. You're rooting into the ground, creating as much stability as you can from the ground up. And I'm pushing the earth away from me the whole time. And I can feel that tension rise all the way up into my body, especially my butt. Ooh. If you do this right, you'll feel your butt too. We just have a saying at functional effect, All right? Well, a lot of trainers do. If you have a trainer that does not have a butt, they don't know what they're doing, so you're not activating appropriately, so you run away. Always look at your trainer's butt. <laughs> They'll tell you if you know what they're doing. <sighs> Woo! Feeling those legs. I got about seven. If you are ahead of me, Totally fine. Just make sure you get to those Supermans next. And those Supermans are for 10 as well. I'm going to head on to those right now. We got 6.35 on the clock, guys, so about 10 more minutes. Just giving you guys kind of a heads up. The Supermans, make sure it's a tuck, a reach, and a squeeze. Tuck. Reach, squeeze. Tuck, reach, squeeze. If you can, you could hold the top of that Superman for a second or two to really own the position. That way it's not Momentum, and you'll feel if you're activating appropriately or not. Momentum will kind of disguise what you're doing. You hold it, you'll know. Again, that's for 10. We're after those rotational classics. I want to face this way. Woo. All right. Just make sure you stay tall. Spine straight. Step. Sit into the corner of that hip. Launch up. Step and sit. Woo. Launch and stand. Don't overly rotate and go into your wall like I almost did. The concrete wall will not be forgiving. There we go. Doing good. Remember, you can hold the weight up by your chest and the goblet. You can do two dumbbells by your shoulders, or you can even hold them and straddle the leg you're stepping with. I like the straddle. Some people will kind of go in between. That's fine. But if you have the two dumbbells, straddling feels better because you're able to sit a little bit more into that hip. This feels more comfortable. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do if you have the weight. And if you're doing body weight like me, that works. 
So make sure you keep that leg powerful as you launch back up. So you don't find yourself think it's a little stutter step I've seen some people do. Only step as far as you can, keeping that powerful. Woo. And if you're done with those Cossacks, I got one more after this, but it's those rotary stabilities on all fours. You can do what I did and start doing with your knees. You can go right into the bear crawl. You can stay on your knees the whole time. It's more about you pushing through the ground and feeling that first before you make it harder. So again, just make sure hands are underneath your shoulders, knees are under the hips, toes into the floor, creating as much pressure into the ground as you can, and then twisting the earth with your hands. Take a deep breath in. Hold it for three. Back down. Again, I'm not picking up my limbs. It's about the pushers. Do the work. This is the first movement you would, or a crawl, is to push through the ground and propel yourself forward. That's to create that rigidity in the core. So I'm going to pick my knees up. Woo. Make sure you're gripping the ground with those fingertips. Our hands are just like your feet, like I talked about rooting earlier. Same principle. Oh, all right. So I'm good on that one. And there's the shin boxes after that. Again, any variations good for you? Nice and tall. Rotating bridge. And you might find yourself shifting forward. That's okay. Just fix yourself. Whew. Oh, man. Again, you're driving through the ground. You're not using your lower back and arching and coming up. It's about pulling those hips through kind of like a bridge or even like a deadlift, if that makes better sense to you. So pull those hips all the way through and back. Rotating through and back. If you find yourself like you're using your lower back, which I'm kind of feeling it a little bit, I'm just going to do the shin box to really focus on my hip mobility here. I'm really going to stay tall. So I like to use my hands for the support. There we go. All right. We got about five minutes, guys. So I'll take your drink. Should be able to get one more round in. And then we'll get that nice leg circuit as a finisher. Ooh. All right. Ooh, Kathy, see you using some weights for the squats. Very nice. Laura just finished up the set. Good. Lainey as well. Nice job. Oh, sorry. My finger's right in the way. <laughs> I want to see everybody else is doing. Steve, just starting the next round, too. All right. Well. I might as well get going too. Take my coffee for a second. All right. One and a half squats. It is a little before 641. So let's see what we got, guys. Again, still take your time. I know it's the last set. You don't want to rush to get that third round, but I'd rather have you take your time and only get through half the set and have good reps for the exercises rather than rushing through and being sloppy. It's always about good form. It's always about good activation. That we're getting the biggest bang for a buck for our exercise and not increasing your risk for injuring yourself. If I'm feeling my legs now, this finisher is going to feel good. Got one more for me. Oh, yeah. All right. Superman's next. If you guys are done with those squats, I'm about 642. I'm getting there. Almost there. 
Tuck, reach, and squeeze. Tuck, reach, and squeeze. I honestly say that to myself to make sure I get all the parts I need to get. Especially that reach. And it's not a big lift. It's just enough to squeeze the butt and squeeze the shoulders and get your limbs off the ground. And if you get 10, it'll be those caustics. So going good on time, guys. It's good. Whew. How's everybody doing? All right. We're all getting the lunges going, too. Good. Nice and tall. Step in lunge. Remember just to stay strict, especially this exercise. Really easy to get sloppy when you're tired. So just focus, stay disciplined with the form. That way you get everything out of it. You stay safe. We don't hurt the knee, or the back. And you're sitting into that hip. Woo. Talking about focusing, I screwed that one up. <laughs> there we go. About two minutes left, guys. Two minutes. Almost there. I'm going to step this way. Take your time still. As much as I want to get to the rest, I'm really trying to focus on the exercise I'm on. I'm really feeling it too. Two more for me. All right, still actually a little bit, about a minute left or so. This is good. On all fours, if you guys are with me still, doing the rotary stability. I'm gonna stay on my knees, because I know I'm too tired to go to the bear crawl one, and I wanna make sure I'm feeling my core enough. This way I can really focus on my breathing in my grip on the floor. Got about 20 seconds left, guys, so finish up with what you're on. I'm just gonna do my shin boxes with my hands for support to make sure I really feel my hips. We'll finish this last exercise, and we just have the finisher left. And then we started off Monday on a really, really good note. I thank you guys for joining me. All right, so if you're still doing it, just finish up what you're on. And watch me. I'm going to show the next one, make sure I got everything in order. All right, so your choice. One or two rounds today it is the leg circuit. We have four movements. So you're going to try to get all four, really without a big rest. That'll count as one set. And you can either do one or two. It is all up to you. I know I will be doing two, because I know Kathy is. She likes to push my legs, so <laughs> we'll go through it. But you are 24 squats is your first exercise, just down and up. Now, these ones can be quick. This is a metabolic finisher. So as long as your form's good, go fast. But again, your form has to be good first. If you're trying to get sloppy, slow it down a little bit. That's your squats. That's your first one, 24 of those total. Then you have reverse lunges. Step back, together, step back, together again, getting 24 total, not each side. Your legs would not <laughs> work afterwards. So again, 12 each side for that one. Altering lateral lunges, stepping to the side, together, to the side, together, to get 24 total as well. The 12 each side, however you want to count it. And the final one is Jump squats. You get a little pop, doesn't have to be a big jump, but if jumping isn't for you, right back to squats, 
Or if you want something in the middle, do what we call a squat check. Feet start together, kick your legs out, together, out, together. I have three of those variations are fine with me. But again, it's squats for 24, reverse lunges for 24, lateral lunges for 24, and jumps for 24. That all counts one set, one or two today. I'm gonna take my shoes off. Let me really get into this. All right, when you guys are ready, let's do it. 24 squats, here we go. Just remember to take your time, keep everything solid. And if you need to take the rest in between the exercises, do it. It's ideal that you have good form. So I'd rather you not try to sacrifice speed for form, or sacrifice your form for speed, rather. Once you get your 24th squat, you're doing those reverse lunges. I got a couple more left. Oh, there we go. All right. Again, 24 total reverse lunges, 12 each side. You're gonna alternate. Step back together, bending that knee, and I'm almost touching the ground with the knee. I'm not actually touching it. You can if you want, but just don't bang it to the ground. But I'm still keeping my weight over my front leg. Again, you're getting 24 total, 12 each side. Feeling good. Once you get your 24th reverse lunge, it'll be those lateral lunges next. Take your time. If you're ahead, go right ahead. Oh, here we go. So again, lateral lunges, feet start together. I'm gonna go at a small angle. Let's step to the side, together, and the other side together. So you get 24 total. I'm on four. Woo. Take your time though. That was a tough finisher. Woo. Remember to still sit in that corner of the hip, just like we practice with the rotational caustics. So I want to keep that chest up just a little bit. Not super high, we're arching, but it's not a deadlift. We're going all the way down. I want to be able to read your shirt as you're doing these. After you finish your 24th lateral lunge, it's those jump squats left. Whew. Okay. That's feeling good. Oh man. All right. Bust him out. Can you use your hands like I'm doing? You don't have to, you can keep them there the whole time. It's up to you. Oh man. Oh, I can feel those legs. Two more. Oh, oh man, that ah, feels good. So if you're doing a second round, definitely take a big break. If you're only doing one, you are done. Take your time. I'm gonna shake it out. I'm gonna take about a minute or so. And then I will do it again. Oh boy, you guys are doing great. I'm gonna take a quick peek while I'm resting. Everybody's doing. Laura, are you doing a second set with us too? All right, yeah. All right, well, you doing good? Mr. Steve, yeah. Are you going for two as well, Steve? All right, all right. We're all doing great, Lainey too? All right. Oh, man. Oh, Laura already started. All right, good for you, Laura. I'll be out, I'll meet you. <laughs> All right, if you're ready, go for it. If not, take your time. We'll see, last set though. Last set, best set as we say. Let's get it. Ooh. I like this though, we're all pushing each other. This is good. We'll get this last round in and then we have a nice Monday.
especially when you're getting tired, make sure you're still focusing on getting that breathing down. That way you can keep oxygen flowing so you don't burn out. Oh, there we go. All right, for the squats, remember we have lunges. Woo! All right. Keeping the weight on the front leg, but bending that back leg so you're almost touching the ground. You guys are doing great. Keep it up. We're almost there. Oh, man. Feeling good. All right. I got my laterals. You guys might be a little ahead. You might be a little behind. Let's go at your own pace. Woo! All right, laterals to go. Woo! There we go. Let's get after it. When I'm getting really tired, I always tell myself, I'm almost there. Once I finish this, I'm done. It gives me just enough energy to push through. Because that's it. I have no more energy to expend after this set. I can lie down on this floor if I wanted to relax. Sometimes it's a mental game. Talk yourself through it. You guys got this. We're almost there. And the camaraderie always helps. Oh, man. I can feel those legs. Oh, boy. Almost there for me. Got one more each side. There we go. Woo! Oh, last one, last one. Uh, let's just finish it. Finish it, finish it. Let's go. Come on. Woo! Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, four more. Come on. One, two, three. Woo! There we go. Oh, yeah. Nice job, everybody. Your legs might feel like jello like mine. I hope so. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Nice job. Let me take the spotlight off of me. I'll see all your lovely faces. Oh, man. Okay. How's everybody doing? Woo. Oh. You guys did a real good. Good job, everybody. That was a great way to start Monday. Thank you for joining me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like the music. Oh. So, you know, if we're still in lockdown, after the 30th, we'll be creating some new classes. Uh, for now, we're stick with this. We'll make some tweaks here and there. But uh, if we end up going into May, we'll be doing all body weight classes for you guys. We're still going to stick with the Zooms, and we're going to keep everybody going. For now, it's kind of up in the air, depending on what Chicago Land wants to do. But let me take off the recording. You guys did a good job. Woo! There we go.